to tell you later. The show where you learn so little about so much and vice versa. Sincere thanks to all those who support us on Patreon. See the full list at the end of the show. By the way, there's always room for more. And don't forget to like and subscribe to their channel. We haven't got a title song for this show, so we're singing this thing instead. Okay. It's really just a substitute, nonetheless. The melody may stay in your head. Oh, I hope so. Cause it's a tune. It's a tune. You'll love to croon. You'll love to croon. Ah, but there's one thing you should know. We have to confess we do not possess a title song for this show. Ain't it peculiar? Believe it or not, we haven't got a title song for this show. Guess what? I have a surprise guest today. Welcome to Tell You Later. This guy just popped into the Tell You Later studios and you might know him as Paul McCusker because that's who he is. Yay! Hey. Welcome. Does anybody know me as somebody else? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know your private life that well. But oh, okay. anyway, I, I just wanted to say thank you to all our patrons for supporting this show and yeah, two thumbs up. And you know what? Having Paul on the show today might, might, might guarantee <laughs> that he you will watch it. You are he might, might get people. him to watch an episode no, now that he's I never on. watch myself on these things. Oh, I you don't? Do no, oh, no, no, well, no. hopefully he'll I don't he'll even watch. listen to myself. Well, he'll watch another episode. But he's in town, and we were just sitting around chatting and said, Hey, why don't you come on the show? Because everybody wants to talk to you you are really? oh my goodness there's so many things i could talk to you about okay yes where do we want to start hang on but if we're going to <laughs> yes we have to be careful though because yes. we we can be a bit reckless over the years we we've can, known we each say, other for a long time we can time. be indiscreet we say things later on we like, know we shouldn't have you're said right we have to so we're going to act i think if we're going i agreed to do this but that means Vinny is going to have to edit the anything crew of that's one in has a, to and yes your crew of one has to edit Make sure that that's you're... the truth bell you were asking what this is, is. it oh is yeah it? yeah okay the truth bell. so that's what it's going to be so he's got to make sure to edit so that if we say anything, anything that isn't good that we'll cut gonna, it out and edit. make sure that it doesn't because we don't want to who knows Offend what anybody. we might say we don't want to say no. something that's inappropriate re regarding some people we don't know we it could people happen. we do know people who know us but we don't really know them they say praise in public but criticize in private. Have who you heard that? that? Uh, who I don't says know. that? Dr. Laura? I don't know. Dr. Somebody, Laura? <laughs> somebody Did you really say no, that? No, but I have read that. That's what you're supposed to do. Is she a character So can Odyssey? I say, I think you're one of my favorite writers. Well, thank you. No. Paul McCusker was um, the second writer, basically, full-time writer, okay. to come on to write for Adventures in Odyssey because Phil was doing it with Steve, and Steve Harris kind of went on to do yeah. other things, and they brought you in. Well, they brought me in before Steve left, actually. I think but I'm actually know? one of the reasons Steve left. Oh, I, well. is don't think, I don't, I don't play well with anybody. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I hear. Um, yeah, I keep, I'm going to get the T-shirt. <laughs> I don't play Apparently, well. I but don't you know play they well made, with others. Do you know they made Phil a T-shirt? They're Did making they? Phil one that says no. It just says, it says no. no. Right. It just says right. no. I was also the one runs with scissors. That would be the other. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to think where you because Chuck was our producer and you knew Chuck. Yeah, Chuck was freelancing. Actually, he hadn't become a producer yet. He and I start. I started a wait. Week. How do you be a I freelance started, producer? I, well, he was consulting on the show. They okay. were developing. Okay, let me go back. So there was this pre Odyssey show called Family, Family Portraits. Portraits. And Chuck Bolte was consulting on that. And I was working with Chuck at another organization. Can you say and, what it is? Yeah, it was Continental Ministries. And he did Jeremiah People, which I knew him years before because of Jeremiah People. And so Chuck came into the office one day and Continental. said... Continental. Continental Ministries. They what did you, touring what did groups. did you do there? What they did was they did touring groups of singing groups all over the world, actually. And... Um, uh, my my brother toured with them. I had friends who toured with them, and Jeremiah people used to come to our church. Tour I think with that's them. A, that's a personal question. Oh. 
actually the people in the group were the groupies, but <laughs> as it turns out. But Chuck yeah. came to me. I remember I, I was uh, like a communications coordinator. So you weren't I, singing. Oh, heavens no. But was your brother singing? Uh, he actually played guitar. He could sing. He could. Uh, my brother actually took over. I, I was supposed to learn to play guitar, but he said, you don't know what you're doing with that. So my brother took the guitar. He learned guitar. Was he older than you? Yeah, he was my older brother. Oh, so he... I got a set, a drum set. You know, I wanted to be Mickey Dolan's, and um, and I got a drum set. And he went, you're not serious about this. And he learned to play drums. <laughs> he used so, you for so, the guitar. <laughs> so I became a writer. I learned to type and became a writer, ah. and he wasn't interested in that. Well, there you go. See, this is how life choices are determined. It you know, very often so has funny. nothing to do with anything other than sibling if rivalry. If your siblings right? take your instruments, he and took you've the got to find and He became very good at these things. I love my brother. But I'm not competitive. Mm. So I decided I've got to do something that he's not interested in doing. You're not competitive at all? Actually, I'm not really. It's mm. terrible. Why? I, sh I feel like I should be. Why? But I really am Why not. Why should you be? I don't know. Because to be better than somebody else who but thinks maybe that they should be. But maybe you already think no, you're better. Know. You already think you're better, no. so you don't have to See, I don't even have. I don't even have that maybe going for me. A little confident. What do you have no. going for you? I think sometimes I think I'm a pretty good writer. You, yes. Sometimes, uh, not all the time, and I think I'm okay, getting better at tell it. Tell me this because I think uh, you, know, you wrote. I, I said you I said it. you're a good writer for Connie. I think you wrote this, and I could be wrong because I don't want to give you credit if you don't deserve it. Hmm. But I remember, I'm pretty sure you're writing on the show then when Eugene went in the imagination station. Yeah. And yeah. he was locked in his room. And I went over to, I, Connie went over yeah, to Connie. Eugene's place, mm -hmm. and he g finally got him to open the door. Mm. And he opened the door, and I remember Connie said, open these curtains, it's dark in here. Mm. And I thought, that's exactly the first thing I, Katie, would have said if I walked in there in a dark room. And it felt so natural, and mm. I thought think you might have written that. No, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. For real? Yeah, I don't think I wrote that. You didn't that write that? No. You didn't write that? Yeah, but we always did that, though. I mean, especially in the early days of the show, the number of times you would come in and Phil or I would have written a show uh -huh. of Connie being in some situation or how she was. to We're talking to about Adventures in Odyssey. Did we say that already? Oh, are we? I thought we were talking well, about Bugs case, Bunny and Warner no. Brothers. But. Okay. So, um... There were a lot of times on Adventures in Odyssey when you'd come in to record and Phil or I had written the show and you would say, oh, this just happened to me. Oh, I was just thinking about this yeah. the other day. Though I, uh, I don't remember which show it was, but my favorite was when you came in and we had Connie cut her finger while she was cutting with a knife. And um, you... <laughs> said you had just done that the other day, and then in the process of showing how you had done it, you did it again. <laughs> Is that true? That, you don't remember this? No. I remember this vividly. I remember so little. You were like, I just did this. And then and then in the process of showing how you had cut yourself with a knife, you cut yourself with the knife so a second time. So is that time. art imitating life? It's both. Or with you, it was always art. With you, it was always both. <laughs> I guess so. You, you, it's you really and, true. You and, and Connie's situations overlapped. Huh? Or, or themes or sensibilities. Because I used to say, you guys got in my head. You got in my head. And it's a scary place to be. I know. You know. It truly is. But you know what? You forget it right away. Well, <laughs> it's just, you might. But I have nightmares for weeks afterwards So about that. you have worked at Focus. You wrote Odyssey. Then you went off you married a woman from England, which was kind of like... Yeah, you know, it was funny. Elizabeth and I got married within a week. Well, I started working for Focus on the Family to do Odyssey mm -hmm. in January of 1988. And Elizabeth and I got married in February of 1988. No, so you were, but you were Odyssey dating Odyssey has been part before. of our entire... Well, we were obviously but dated. It wasn't an arranged there. marriage. No, she was working there and I knew you before you got married. After we got married. No, it was before. Because she was in England. Because remember, she had that friend well, from England stay with her that used to work She's correcting me about at, my wife and, and my marriage. And she used to work at... How does she do that? I don't know. Okay, let me... Let me re remember that girl... Remember, let me retrace okay. the steps here. Okay. Yeah, that she had that friend we from met, England who worked at Focus, too. We met before I worked for Focus. You, okay. 
Though I began to freelance for Focus. Okay, so I did know you, and I knew that. But you didn't know me before. But didn't we got she married. work at Focus? Well, she did after we got married. Wow. It was after. And she worked for Focus a long time after we got married. In fact, it was very strange for her because there were people who were praying for her because of our immigration situation getting her into the country. Mm -hmm. And everybody was praying for her. So when she actually went to work for Focus, all these people would come up and go, oh, we were praying for you. And they acted like they knew her. <laughs> and she has all these strangers talking about it. She was very touched by it, but it was also a bit strange. And um, what was her friend's name? You know the woman who went back to England? Um, I have no idea. Yes, you do. You'll remember it as we go along. No, I won't remember So that. we have... We had a very small office when we started Focus. We had a secretary named Joyce. I don't know if they Joyce, called her. Joyce, yeah. Um, we called her Joyce. Joyce, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know what her job title was. It was just Joyce. That was her things, job title. Her name was Margaret. <laughs> it was, yeah. her, actually. She, so you called her Joyce all I those called years, her not Joyce, realizing that was a, and it's she, an acronym and for And she her. got married. A lot of people got married because we were all we're all basically the same age. We're going to talk about similarities on this show about our ages because I think our time, you know, we think alike because we're all kind of the same age. And 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 but Joyce Okay, we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about. I'm just waiting to hear where you're going to go. We're going to talk this. about ADD. Oh, ADD. Yes. yes. <laughs> a good example <laughs> of that. Staying about, on subject. And and OCD and all oh, the. Yes, Orange County. Yes, I actually will did a little bit on this show about uh, an, an editorial about. OCD. No, what do you know? Those initials. What do you call them? Acronyms. Yeah, it was about acronyms. Uh -huh. Yes, he has an editorial about that. Yeah. That I think was, he was the one who also wanted to know why the word abbreviation was so long. <laughs> That's a good point, isn't it? I think. Yes. I, 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 that's a good point. So Joyce was married to a guy who was a biblical archaeologist. That's right. Did you ever, ever go to his um, No, I never Dr. actually Blaine. got to that, but I, I, I remember. Did. No, it was excellent. I remembered. I got to go to. He had his own private museum. Yes, that's right. right. That's what he told you. No, wait, what? That's how he learned. Well, he had the in. keys because I took my son Adam over there when Adam was oh, little. That's right. wait, no, I remember. I all was that. very curious about this, yeah. and he he would dig up things. And well, I'll tell you what I saw. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, he was an archaeologist. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. I get it. Can you dig it? I get it. Okay, um, and and. We went to see, and he had, like, Roman safety pins. By the way, do you know I'm going to Portugal, and wait, I wait, found... Wait, speaking of ADD, <laughs> Ro wait, can we go back to Roman safety pins yeah. before we go to Portugal? The Romans had safety pins. Yeah? Metal, yeah. For their Roman diapers? I don't know. I, I just, saw. I did not know and little It never toy, occurred to me to and wonder if toys, the Romans had that. He, he had dug up toys that they had, you know, like before yeah. Jesus' time, like little cart and horses that were toys. Yeah. And he said, there's no, nothing new under the sun, all these That's things. That's true. Yeah. So, <clears throat> anyway, I need some. Hey, did what? you drink out of that glass yet, the blue one? Why? Was I supposed to? Did you? Was did, I, should I have? It, it's my Connie glass. I just want to know if you drank Is it out yours? Of it. Well, if you haven't had it, I'm going to give you this I'm one. I'm not telling. Did you yeah, that's my it? lipstick. Is that your lipstick? <laughs> this is my Connie glass. I don't. This was one of our Christmas presents. I don't presents. know what this says about me. You know what? But this was from a fan, too. Really? Do you Have remember? Have you washed it since they sent it to were you? Were you in focus when we when they gave away the, the 500 episode iPods? Probably. I was around then. So at that time. By the way, I did spit in that. I should have told you before. <sighs> Fine. Okay. Did you know Chris and I made these pens on one of our episodes? No. Yeah, we did. That's so sweet. Are we They're not all something? pens. This one doesn't work. We might. Hey, why'd you take <clears throat> my Connie glass, cruel one? Because I in it. He was lying. Was I? I don't know. But you, I want to use my know. Connie glass. <clears throat> anyway. Okay. So what am I trying to say? Welcome Portugal. back to the show. Yeah, Portugal's really old. <laughs> I just, yes, it's been I, around like longer 3, than me. Like years. Is there a secret microphone the in here? Phoenicians. Is this why you were pushing it towards me? No, I think he's just trying to bow. It's like moving, moving flowers. Hello, how are you? So, um, you can... <laughs> 
Now, see, for those in the audience Artie who, Johnson. Artie right? Johnson, yes. exactly. Very, Very interesting, interesting, but stupid. And that Thank you. old guy that sat on the park bench and <laughs> made <laughs> remarks to Ruth Rosie. Yeah. 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 Do you That's, believe in the okay, year so after? People, and you know what I'm here after. <laughs> <laughs> when people ask... Me. This is going to be so edited. I'm just no. When you um when you were talking about ADHD a minute ago, I was coaching a class and someone said <laughs> on how to do it. No, they yeah. Well, they said how do you you know what are the requirements for doing voiceover? I said well, I think you have to have ADHD mm. for one thing, and uh, <clears throat> I forget what the other things were. <laughs> I can't remember. I had right a book now. about it's um, getting late. The connection between um, creative people and mental illness. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Did you write Why it? Why are there? No, I could. <laughs> It'd be autobiographical, but it's it's it is interesting to me the number of people that you, if they haven't been diagnosed as ADD, mm -hmm. that they probably are anyway in the acting and creative but is community. It, but is it a real problem? Now, see, well, I'm not sure it's a problem. Well, socially, it might be a problem. Now, my when it comes to creativity, maybe not. It depends on how productive they are and if they can actually if they get can pay done. their bills. I mean, it's strange. I'm ADD. Mm -hmm. Hello. But, me too. Hi. Nice to meet nice you. To, yeah, thank Hello. you. Um, and uh, maybe just a smidge of OCD, but ADD. And yet what you learn is you get into a zone. Mm hmm. And the zone for me, because you'd think You're I should really be a writer. You're a really good concentrator, You'd think right? I shouldn't be a, a good writer, because writing requires concentration, focus. focus. But when I get into that zone, I mean, I am in the zone. Okay. And I can write for hours and then not even be aware that hours have gone <laughs> by. Me. Um, but Let like me in conversation, it's a whole different thing. Do you startle easily if you're startle. in your zone? If somebody walks in... Do you no. get startled? No, I don't get startled because I'm not aware that they're there. <clears throat> but if you were aware, would you startle? Well, no, because then I'd ease it. Well, unless somebody jumped in. I mean, you know. Okay. See, Because we have these kittens now that, that seem to decide that the, the great thing is jumping on my shoulder <laughs> while I'm at my computer. <laughs> and suddenly out of nowhere, it's like they dropped out of the sky and will land on my shoulder. That startles me. But... But otherwise, when you startle, do you make a sound? Uh, uh gosh, that's a good question. I boo. I guess, no, I guess not. <laughs> no, but I do. I. You know what happens? Okay, so what, do you do? what you're saying about if, of course, and I'm not officially diagnosed as anything, but. I, as you notice, sometimes I get easily distracted about things. But when I'm doing something, when I'm really focused, like... Like right now. Like if somebody walked into my view, and I would scream because I, I do that. Loudly? Yeah, because can, can it's, you, it's like a knee-jerk it It's a knee -jerk reaction except with so my mouth. So you hit yourself in the face with your knee? <laughs> so with my Is that mouth. a knee-jerk reaction? You know what? I did do I'd that. I'd scream if I that did happened do to that. me. I did do that when I was in no, like second grade. No, let me tell you. Let you me... hit yourself in the face with your knee? Yes, I did. I was on the bar at school because that's how I lost my tooth. You had it drinking at my, your school? No, I was on the You're bar. You're in second grade and they let you drink? You know, drink? those bars with three levels. Monkey I don't bars? think they have them anymore they because they bars? think they're not safe. But They're not safe. I know, and they we had gravel. We had gravel on our Makes playground, yes. right? We had broken glass in mine anyway, just as an incentive So not I was to on the bar and, you know, girls, they you can swing around in a circle. Well, I was swinging around and my knee hit my mouth and knocked my tooth out and I couldn't find it because it was in the gravel. So, so I did you didn't not get, get a quarter my, for it? No, I didn't get anything was it from a the quarter? tooth fairy. Then? Yeah, quarter. Was it a quarter? Yeah, it was a quarter. Wow, we are the same age. We are the same wow. age. Wow. <laughs> what would you give your kid now? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying enough for not orthodontics they, they and dental. Knock their own tooth they're out. They're called dental right? appointments, and they're more than a quarter. <laughs> so okay. No, actually, we did do that. We did that for my kids. Yeah. We did dental. You know. You gave them tooth, tooth fairy, fairy yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah for I'm going to tell you. I don't know if I should tell this or not, but if it's not, we'll edit it. One of my children, as you know, my third one, I didn't give birth to. So when he came, he had some life experience with him. And he was about six years old, and he lost a tooth. And I, we we're like, okay, we're going to put your tooth under the pillow. And then the tooth fairy is going to come, you know. And, and he was like, he, he handed me, he was so scared. 
because he was like, I don't want any strange person coming in my room. He goes, no, you get here. You when that's she comes fair. to the door, you give her the tooth and then you can give me the money. Like he that scared him. Well, it makes sense. It does make I sense. I mean, when you think of the multiple holidays in which we're teaching we kids that things. complete strangers are going to come into the house or their room. Yes. Santa Claus. Mm hmm. Tooth Fairy. Easter Bunny. Yeah. I mean, you've got all these strange no, people true. and creatures so, coming in at a time when we're trying to teach them, not well, what to do you do? <laughs> know. You know, so poor Santa gets sprayed with mace <laughs> and gets beaten up, maybe shot. It's a wonder that he even bothers to go in. But it's true. I mean, you don't again. think about that as an He's adoptive He's parent. Just a little word to wise, you know, when we raise our kids as babies, they 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 get used to this stuff. But if it's a foreign concept, you got to think before you present these. It doesn't always go over that well. I don't find that as a parent I ever thought before I presented anything. It was more just, instinctive. You just do. So let me ask you, you worked on Odyssey in the very beginning. Let's just go back to that for a Okay, because I never did finish that about many, what happened. Oh, what so happened? I was, well, no, because I, I worked on family portraits. That's right. And then I started off. I was with married. Odyssey. And I, I was with Odyssey when it started. But it was like two months after it officially launched that I came on staff. I was freelance writing. And so, and I wrote um, like the second episode about Connie and Steve Harris said, you have actually introduced some ideas with Connie that we hadn't thought of and we think this is really good. Like what? Oh, I, I don't know. Probably crooked teeth. I don't know. Excessive nostril hair. I'm not sure what it was, but there was something because I mean, they had an idea of what Connie was and I sort of took what they had and I, then I also had ideas for who she was and based on their ideas I mean I was kind of building you on the foundation you did, did you that Stephen filled Connie in. Did you write the Connie episodes? Uh, the Connie where she Connie did. 1 and 2? Yeah that was me. That was you? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Because that's you know That was very that, and to me they were very favorite. Connie they were they were very Connie in fact if, if you if you look at it, it's interesting about uh, what we did with Odyssey because we had very few shows where people had conversion experiences, which is interesting because our audience was a primarily Christian show, so you don't want to keep doing that. But our view was if you're going to have somebody do that, um, it's not going to be a snap decision. Right. So with Connie, everything about her experience led to her making that decision. And for her, you saw it happen. It played out in Connie 1 and 2, and it was very Connie. But if you now look at what we did with Eugene, mm -hmm. and when we got him up to the point where we had the whole sequence of events leading up to uh, the Time Has Come episode, mm -hmm. and his experience was not really relational, it was through technology. Mm -hmm. The Imagination Station kind of played out his experiences in a way that led him to a conclusion about his faith which was different from Connie. So my view is that salvation is a very personal thing. There's not a cookie cutter thing. I mean, the basis of salvation, of course, is Jesus. But in terms of how God is working, we saw that with C.S. Lewis and other people. Um, when they tell their stories, you see how very specific they are. Mm -hmm. And so that's why with Connie 1 and 2, it was different from what we did then later with Eugene. So Was that fun for you to create two different ways of coming to yeah but i mean it was team effort because we were all writing the episodes that led up to it mm -hmm. but um but yeah i mean to get to the point where we make the decision that it's time for the character to take that step but to make it appropriate for the character you know it's really funny i actually um started going to an evangelical church well before i worked at focus because that's then it became my goal to that's work water Sorry. So anyway, um, that. <laughs> so uh, I started going, and I and I got rebaptized. I rededicated myself, and I got baptized in the evangelical church. And I invited my mom to come to enjoy the full episode. Please support us at patreon.com slash tell you later. Thanks a lot. And what was it like dealing with me? Tell you later. Tell You Later is a Patreon-driven entertainment show. 
So what are you waiting for? Come on over. Join us at patreon.com front slash tell you later. Du hast die Toast bereit, ja. Genille. Co-hosts of Welcome to Later. And when we're not doing that... We're watching Tell You Later. Join us, will you? Cha-cha, you see.